So then we'll take the one and decide what everything else I want. So I might go out if we have different things in mind, but I don't know. Mhm. Mhm. Why are the controls inverted on this? So just so there's an in and what particular thing are you are you sort of [inaudible 1:16:50.78] No, nothing in particular, just sort of everything. Is that right? Okay. So a general review of what we've done the last two weeks would be good for you. Okay. Cool. Yes? Well, there's mainly general review, but um, specifically like the test stuff. How you gonna like get the mileage and stuff like that. So Oh, how to do the testing on the assignment. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. That's easy now. Good. Yes? So- something on both of them. Yes. And also how to make a new folder and and in your own directory and all that stuff. At uni. How to do that sort of stuff at uni. Okay. Cool. That's a good thing to ask. All right. Yeah, how to run the test. I dunno. H- how to run the test. How to look after your account at uni. How to do Unix sort of stuff. Making folders and doing stuff like that. That's all good. Mod, just about mod and div. Some revision about them. Okay, cool. The same mod and test. Mod and tests. Basically the tests. Okay, tests. Mod and tests. Every single thing we've done. Fantastic. And is there anything that's more pressing than anything else? I mean, I'll try and do everything. So even connecting into uni would be a useful thing to do. All right, cool. You might have been trying at a time that uni was down because the uni's been up and down a few times oh, like the internet connection so don't blame yourself necessarily I mean it could be something you've missed out but we'll I'll do a live connection from here okay. so you can watch it yeah, yeah. Tests? running tests yeah. okay um, functions, and functions and recursion now recursion is very advanced and I'll be ha- I will show you some I'll be very happy to show you but I, I th- was it you that wrote on the forum saying you like to review recursion no someone said it uh, it's absolutely fine if you don't get it at this point. You're not going to, for, for the assignment point of view. I mean, at some point you'll need to understand it because it's this really cool thing to understand. But you don't have to kill yourself trying to understand it before the assignment's due, unless you want to. But I'm quite happy to go over it. Does that, does that sound all right? But we'll do, I'll certainly do some function practice. Yeah, what's recursion? Yeah, so we, we just something I mentioned in something I did in that coding video I put up. You, has everyone seen there's a coding video? Yeah, mine didn't work. It didn't work? I, don't know. I couldn't open the link. It's a dot .mov, isn't it? Oh yeah, do get the latest QuickTime. Yeah, I use QuickTime. QuickTime, QuickTime will play it if you get QuickTime. When I opened the link, it didn't open at all. All right, your browser didn't open it, or when you downloaded the file, did you? Were you able to download it? It had problems when it was downloading, but it was nothing to do with my stuff. Ah, well, try it again because I know a lot of people have been able to download it. It could easily have been when the uni was having unis have it had connectivity problems, so they might have crashed halfway through. But once you've got the file, you need quick time to watch it. That's the easiest way of watching it. Yeah, cool. Okay. So try watching that. In that, I talk about recursion. Okay. It was a dangerous thing to do because I think a lot of people think now, oh, I need to understand recursion for the assignment. Yeah. You, you don't. So, but I'll talk. I'll show you what it is today, and you should check out those videos because they might help you with the assignment too. Task one. Uh, and so, uh, getting started on task one. Have you sort of got started? Yeah, I've gotten started. Yes. But like, I'm and stuff. Yeah. How, so the next step. Make a cool. Yeah. Cool. Like okay. Good. Yeah, stuff. functions and things. Okay. Cool. Um, functions and looping. Looping. Oh well, we haven't done looping, so you can't loop at the moment. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which would be frustrating if you program. The lab to the multiple <laughs> oh, looping in eight B in the machine code. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you that. That's cool. All right. All right. That's sort of separate to everything else. So maybe I'll do that at the end in a little side bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's important to know that because we'll be, the reason we started that in lab two, looping in the machine code, is because uh, once we get back, we'll start seeing looping in C and it's the same thing. So I wanted you to sort of get a little glimpse of it in the machine code. Yeah. Um, oh, I just came because I thought it'd be interesting. Just interesting to hear just stuff and you'll learn stuff. Yeah. Is there anything in particular you'd like to learn now, now that you're here? Um, not really. Oh, uh, yeah. So we're definitely doing testing mods, divs, functions, and how to get started on the assignment. What was you? Okay. You, were, you were mod. You were the first mod, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. So mods a great idea. It's good you said that. After you said it, everyone else said it too. So that's very good. Yes. Task one. Task one. What about task one? I can't even do the warm-up exercise. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll do, let's do the warm-up exercise together. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I did comp one nine one one. Oh, you're just here, just. You're uh, a visitor. Welcome to our Comp 1917. Yes, you're, you're welcome. Hey, have you got an assignment too over the break in Comp 19? What's your assignment? Um, I'm kind of stuck actually, so maybe you can help me. I can help you with it. It's about calendars. Yeah. Oh, 
oh, it's to work out the number of days in a year and the number of days in a month for a given year. That's a, that's a cool assignment. And that's interesting because you learn about different calendar systems. <laughs> um, no, but that's an interesting assignment. And that's like all using ifs, which is really all our assignments about. Ifs. Oh, okay. Ifs. So that's right. Yeah. Yeah, um, just general stuff like the task map. Oh. So, uh, and in particular, if you had to learn one thing? Not really, but all of what you just said. Oh, everything sounds good. Yeah. Cool, cool. Oh, that, that's, that's working out well. Task one. Just task one? Is there a particular thing that someone hasn't said that you'd like to know about? Um, numbers greater than 100. So have you started? You can do numbers up to 100 or something? Uh, about 90, 90. You can do numbers up to? 90s. You can do the numbers up to 90s, <coughs> but beyond that it goes a bit crazy? Yeah. OK, all right. When I'm doing task one, you make sure you ask me a question because I might forget that. Just say, hey, what happens after 100? And we can work it out together. Yeah. Okay. Yes, task one. task one. Same as everyone else, just getting started or uh, you're partway through it and you want to? Halfway through getting 21. I can't get the one to print out as iron. Oh, okay. You want a one to print out as iron. You want to work out how to do that. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, um, I was the one who asked to do recursions on the forum. Okay, cool. So I'm quite happy to do recursion. Did you hear what I was saying before? Were you here when I said that? So it's something you can completely relax about. And I'll be doing it also next week. But it's also useful to learn now. But can't you use it for task one? Look, some people have used it for task one. Um, so it is possible. I do not believe it is the easiest or cleanest way of doing task one. I've done it both ways. Uh, and the reason I picked task one was I wanted to have a task that didn't require recursion or looping. Because recursion lets you do loops. So I think it would be a more complicated way of solving task one. However, it's not much more complicated, so you're more than welcome to try that as a personal challenge if you want. But you certainly don't need that for task one. Hi, guys. Just grab a seat. Don't sit too far towards the back. Did you have anything in particular you two that, um, uh, that you would like us to cover today? Quota? Go to statement. Oh no, we can't use go to because we haven't covered it in class. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Also, the only reason you'd want to go to is to have a loop. Is that right? Oh uh, yeah, it's just like for, uh, for 22 number, it just uh, it makes 20. Yes. And then goes to, uh, to, to print two out. Ah, oh, okay. Well, I think a function would probably be even better than a go to there. So let's look at that. Yeah. It's I, just like yeah. for one to nine numbers. Yes. It, Yes. 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 So the, you've used the go-to to sort of reuse some of your code, so you haven't had to write the same thing out. And I think you'll find a function does that even better than a go-to. In fact, these days no one really uses go-tos yeah, at all. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, so we. So so the short answer to your question is, don't use a go-to in your assignment, even if you have already. And it's really short. Make sure you pull it out because we can only use things that we've covered in the course. And I suspect we won't be covering GoTo in the course at all. Or if we do, it'll only be to make fun of it. <laughs> but I'll tell you, but it'd be interesting for you to know why we're going to make fun of it. Because um, in the old days, people only used GoTo's. Because like in 8BM, in the assembly code you guys are programming in, it's got a GoTo. Instruction 13, 14, and 15 are all GoTo's. In the old days, that's all that anyone had. For those that don't know what a GoTo is, it's just an instruction that says, oh, computer, you're here now. Jump to this place. It tells the computer to jump somewhere else and keep executing from there. But we tend not to need that anymore. Now we've got functions. So we'll talk about functions, and hopefully that'll solve your problem. Uh, can, you, can you please teach us uh, more about recursion? Recursion, yeah. Um, we will talk more about recursion. But like I was saying, uh, you missed it. Um, you don't need it for the assignment. Uh, I just mentioned it briefly in that coding video. We will be talking about it more in class. And <coughs> labs are on it next week as well. So there's no need to panic or think, oh, no, everyone understands something I don't understand. In fact, most people probably haven't even seen those videos and probably have never even heard the word recursion. So you shouldn't panic about it. But if you're interested in it, I'm more than happy to show you bits and pieces about it, because it is pretty cool. All right, um, now let's start off by creating a telnet session to help the person that's having trouble telnetting it. Uh, SSHing it. Sorry, the lab's going to be open. Yeah, labs should be open. I haven't checked, but they're normally open just about all the time. The lab hours are on the internet somewhere. So yeah, you should be able to wander over to the labs. Did everyone see that there are consultations running? Does everyone know about consultations? If you click on the where and when, there's someone that the school's paying, we should have advertised this better, um, to just sit in a room and answer your questions about the assignment. That's their entire job. Uh, um, 
Yeah, yeah. It went, the spec went final on Friday. You mean you just made the draft? Yeah, I took off the words draft. <laughs> so yeah, that's the final. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Making a final is just pulling the word draft off it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't like to change it because then if I made a different page, um, some people will keep going to the old page by mistake. I'm sure. But also, I like it that if anything changes, you can always with the wiki you can track anything that's changed. So if the final one had been different to the draft one, you could have just clicked that diff button and it would have shown you all the places where it was different. So it's sort of convenient to leave it in one spot. I should have made that a bit clearer. So does everyone get that? The, the, the spec that's out there is now the final spec. And we use the word final loosely because, you know, it still could happen tomorrow. Someone will find a bug somewhere and we have to change a word. And, yeah. Final just means we're unlikely to change it. And I was so pleased we didn't have to change it at all already. Supermarket trolley, what do you guys reckon? Should we get a supermarket trolley? I think they're pretty stylish. Oh, you can't see what I'm looking at. Sorry. How do we take it Oh, there's instructions at the bottom of the spec, just something you type in and it submits it electronically. You have to do it from uni or, to, to, or you have to connect into uni using PuTTY. There's a web page for how to do it. Yeah, and that's connected into the spec, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if it's not connected, you could just connect it in. Uh, Thurston, if it's not connected and you notice it's not connected, could you just make a link into it? But hopefully it's, everything should all be connected around. But in the spec, if you go to the bottom of the spec, it'll tell you how to submit the assignment. Can you see that? We're slowly getting there, aren't we? What are you looking at? Clean the air filter. Forward off. Lights down. There we go. Clean the air filter. After cleaning the air filter, reset the filter timer. All right. Could you clean the air filter? And when it's finished, would you mind resetting the filter timer? Okay, we're done it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Are you going to get it? No inputs detected. What? Ah, got it. All right, here we go. That's our homepage. Let's go there. Let's make it a bit bigger. Um, so to submit, let's go, how do I find the assignment? If I go to the schedule and I log in, I got a, let's have a look. Uh, where is it? Task one? Oh, yeah, that's how you find it from the schedule. Uh, if you go back, let's just go back there. Ev everything, yeah, I'll make it a bit smaller. Everything about the course is on the schedule. So, lecture notes, any files we use in lectures, uh, the videos you want to download, the tutes and labs, solutions. Actually, that's a broken link because we now put the solutions in the tutes and labs. Tasks that come out. Extra videos you can download, tutes and labs, blah, 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 blah. Does that make sense? So everything's just all in one spot. Hey, when will the rest of the lectures never come up? Like seconds before the lecture. Does that make sense? Like the lecture notes are written just before the lecture. Yeah, I mean like the, the, the lecture videos. Maybe. Oh, the week two ones? Oh, yeah, we haven't taken them up the hill yet. So we have to take them up the hill. And maybe we'll have a chance at the end of today to take them up. So yeah, sorry, it's, it's taken a while to get this light up. Um, and we might not even be able to get them up today now I think about it because I've got a series of meetings after this and then the gear is all packed away. It's, we've got to work out a better way of publishing them. As of next month, I'll be able to upload them from my home, but I don't have enough bandwidth at the moment to actually get them to the survey. <laughs> it's insane. So, sorry about that. Yes? Yes, I'm with Optus. Thank you, Optus. Yeah. They charge for uploads as well as downloads. Yeah. Under the old cable plans I didn't, under the new ones I do, and I swapped, yeah, you know, without reading the small print. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's slow and expensive. Um, okay, so let's have a look. Task one. Uh, right down the bottom, style, marking, getting started, testing, submitting. Okay, it was you were asking about submitting? Right down the bottom here. So blah, 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 blah. Read about how to submit. So there's more information about submitting here. Blah, 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 blah. And also, if we go all the way back down to the bottom, where we just came from, a little bit here. How to use dry run, how to submit it, 
and that's all. Oh, yes, you can ask a question. And while you're doing that, why don't I actually fix the revision history? What date did it go final? Does anyone remember? Thursday. Which was what? Twentieth? Yes. I mean, something that loops back so that you can print out numbers straight back. You know how you, 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 put, you scan a number? Yep. And then you print out a number? Yeah. Should the program terminate or should it go back? And no. You should, his question was, after you've read one number and printed it out, so you might have read 10 and printed out whatever that is, does anyone know? Yeah, to you. To you. Yeah. You print out to you. Do you then ask the user, that, please enter another number and print that out? And please, no is the answer to that. You have to do what the spec said. And the spec says, read a number, print it out. So that's what you do. No, but you are, uh, well, let's have a look what the spec says to do. What should you do? You write a program to convert a number to noise. You should read a number in and its output should do that. Don't print anything else other than that one line. Yeah. So does your program print more than one line? No, but I'm saying should it input again after that? No, because that would be printing another line. No, it wouldn't. But you had to go to again. It could be an input line. Yeah, but then when you've typed the number and hit enter, you can't print anything out. But then you're printing more than one line. Good question. It's not completely clear, I agree. We, we only wanted to do one number. Yeah, absolutely. Extra features are very useful for you while you're testing your code. So often you make your programs do extra things while you're testing it. Like as a builder, you often put extra stuff on the buildings, bits of scaffolding and useful doors in and out and extra bits. But when you finish the job, you patch it all up and you just leave it doing exactly what it's been asked for, nothing extra. Even though you can think of all these neat extra things it could do, just do exactly what it asks. Was that a hand? Yeah. So the way as we use a char function. Use the? Like we use int. Yes. We use char as well. Char. Char. Char? No, we haven't done chars yet. So like, um, just my question was like, uh, if you use an int function, uh, yes. can you save an alphabetic? Um... No, no. You can't save any letters at all in your program. So as soon as you generate, as soon as you can work out part of what has to be said, you just have to print it out straight away with printf. What do you mean by saving? Oh, well, later on, you, the question was, what would the alternative to that be? Later on, you'll see how you could actually build up those words. You could have a little area of memory that stored words, and you could start inserting all the words into that as you've got it. And then at the end, said, you could say, print out all those words in one big hit. But no, we just want you to print it out as you go, because you don't know how to save the words at the moment. Just for what, like, well, I used to, I was just seeing the car question. Yes. Car, car question. Yeah, yes. So if we declare car x, yes. if we declare it, yes. then we can only put x is equal to in single inverted comma the single alphabet. Yes. But if I put my name or yes. um, so I'm unable to uh, do it. That's right. And we'll talk about that later on. We just haven't done it in the course yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he wanted to know how to store whole words, not just single letters. But we haven't looked at how to store words or letters yet. But we'll see very soon. Next week you'll see how to store letters. And possibly next week or maybe the week after you'll see how to store whole words. You yeah. said that we can use anything that we learn up to the due date of the time. That's right. So that means we learn words That's right. Yeah, yeah, but you can't use them now. And you, his question was, if we learn words next week, you could use words in the assignment. The answer is, yes, you could, but you don't need to. It won't help your assignment at all. And it'd be risky to do it because we might not cover them next week. It's one of the topics that I've got in grey, which means things I might do if we have time. Okay, so, you know, you wouldn't want to put all your hopes on Richard covering something in the lecture and then us not covering it. But, uh, but it won't help you at all. I'm not being mean. It's, it's really unneeded for this problem. It would add extra complexity to do that. And printing it out as you go is the perfect way of dealing with this assignment. OK, so that's the assignment. So that deal with that. Now, someone wanted to know about how to test. So let's look at testing. Um, ba -ba 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 There's a built-in tester, which you can see in the task by clicking on here. And you type any number in. Let's type in 100. We type out the image we see below, which is what? Z H A G T H. Somebody made a capture B, Oh, thank you very much. You're getting good at reading these, are you? 
you've detected I'm actually a computer, I'm not really a person. That's what these tests are for, to distinguish people from humans, from uh, computers. Okay, so it's two to gear. And to gear meant, uh, uh, means like T, like third T, four T, fifty. To gear is T, yeah. Lots of ten. And to go to you, someone said before, meant ten. So ten lots of tens is a hundred. Now, this is the official program. So that's telling us this is what your program should do. If given a hundred, it should print it out and look. It should look exactly like this. The output of your program. <coughs> so what you can do is you can capture that. I'm just highlighting it. Then I'm going Control C, which is copy or you can probably do it from the edit bar up here, copy, control C. And I could make a little file down the bottom here. Uh, somehow, how do I get an editor? Oh. There is no editor. What's that? Microsoft, Microsoft no, but I'm not going to do that. If you want Notepad. I really want Notepad. Press one. Hold down the super key and press up. What's the super key? The Windows logo. Up. Uh, oh, ah. Uh. Thanks, Microsoft. All right, I'm going to show you how to connect into Uni. So to connect into uni, we download PuTTY. Now, the, wave at me if you're having troubles connecting. It was, OK. Yes and yes. Do you guys already have this thing programmed PuTTY? Yep. Yes. And it's on your desktop. All right. Make sure you're connected to the internet, and you can do it normal stuff like browsing and so on and so on. Double click on PuTTY. Uh, the only thing you really need to fill in is up here where it says host name. You have to type in something like, you, I am always lazy, and just, I just type CSE. You're really supposed to type a machine name here like Williams or login. Let's type login. But you can actually leave this out and it'll usually work. So I've typed login.cse.unsw.edu.au. Is this what you've done already? Yep. And then I click open. That's what you've done? Yep. And it didn't work? Oh, OK. And what did you get? What message did you get? Oh, yeah. OK, I'll show, you. I'll show you. OK, so your problem is only a small one. I reckon the uni was down when you were trying. Because the uni has been down a couple of times. And over the weekend, one of our servers called Wagner just mysteriously disappeared. And if you don't type login, if you just type CSE, it might have tried to send you to Wagner. Yeah. So let's go open. Log in as, and I'll log in as, uh, as the course, which is a pretty crazy thing to log in as. Um, in fact, I'm not even going to do that. It's too paranoid to do that. I'm going to log in as something else. CS1917 CG. Okay. Now, can, is, that, is that writing too small or can you see it? Bit bigger? It's about nearly the right size, just slightly too small. Window appearance, change the font, 14 point, bold, OK. Apply. How's that? OK. So now I've logged in as me. I'm going to start a window. I'm going to start a Pico window. Yes. Yes. Um, change the settings. Appearance, 14. What, what do we normally make it? 20, is it? Apply. How about that? Whoa. I've got a Pico window running here. And what am I going to paste into it? Oh, it's lost it already. I was just, a, ah, there we are. <laughs> I'm not using Notepad. I've logged into Uni, and I'm pasting it into Pico in Uni. So this is the line that I got from that web page. Does that make sense? Now, if I wanted to get another one, or if I wanted to find some that people have already found, I could go to the forum. Let's do that. Home. Oh, actually, I'll go back to that page. I'll leave that one there. Let's go home. 
um, CS191, discuss. Oh, I don't even need to go to the forum. I can go to the assignment itself. There's a page with some of them we stuck in, isn't there? The first 40 or something. Testing. Here's a test. Oh, there's only three tests. Ah. Okay, I'm going to cut all, copy all of these. Zip. And I'm going to paste them in here. Uh, yeah, it didn't work, Control-V. I had to click the right mouse button. But you can press shift and insert as well. Shift what? Insert. Shift insert will do it, apparently. I've never tried that. Yeah. But I click with the right mouse button and that seems to work. Because Unix tends to copy with the left mouse button and paste with the right mouse button. So I guess I'm in the land of Unix now, even though I'm running Windows because I've logged into Uni and SSH. Yeah. Yeah, it's, otherwise it's incredibly annoying, isn't it? If you can't paste, there's nothing more annoying than that. Okay, so we've typed in the first 40 numbers, plus we've got 100 sitting at the top, I'll leave that in there. Now I'm not going to make any other changes to that file, oh, there's a blank line at the end, I'll get rid of that. And I'll save that file, and I'll call that, what do I have to call that? Test or tests? Test.txt. And I'll get out, exit. Now you'll notice in that directory, uh, if I do ls, which lists all the files in that directory, you'll see there's um, something called Alex, mail, public, publication mail, and a file called tests. What? And a file called tests. What have I done? You've got txt or .txt? .txt. .txt. Um, .txt means it's a text file, which means it's okay to look at. .exe means it's a program, and Windows would expect <coughs> to be able to run it. Now, this file here, um, the, who was asking about the testing? A whole lot of people were. This file here contains all those tests. <laughs> it's not going to do anything magic. All it is really recording is 41, 42, because we put 100 in there as well, 42 inputs and outputs. It's, it contains 42 things we expect your program to be able to do. Now David, one of the tutors, has written a program which will run your program over and over again against every one of these and checks that your program matches these. So if you had a million tests in here, and everyone's now sharing all their tests around, so you can cut and copy everyone's tests and just stick it all into one file. Keep no point in having more than one file, just keep adding and adding and adding. Every time you see a test from anyone, stick it in the file. Every time you run the catch-up program or whatever, the ask beyond, and you get an output, don't forget that number, stick it in your test file. Does that make sense? And your test file will just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it contains hundreds of examples of how the program is supposed to behave. And then whenever you think your program's correct, you run David's program, and it'll get your program, the test program, and it'll run them together. And it'll tell you if your output is different to these expected outputs. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter if you've got the same two tests and the one test. Yeah, you can run the same test twice. It'll just run your program twice. So it does a bit of work for nothing. But it won't cause any problems at all. It's pretty robust. Shall I actually run this test.txt? Let's actually run it. Because yeah. in this directory, if I'm thinking right, I probably actually have my version of Bjorn. Let's have a look. Where would it be? I'm just trying to remember. Maybe in public, maybe in, is there a task one or something? No. Oh, CD 08 session one. Maybe it's in CGI bin, CGI bin. I'm just slowly going down. Did someone ask how I get back? Yeah, how do you get back? See, I'm going down into these directories. If I wanted to go back, I type cd, which means change directory. Dot, dot means my parent. So that'll take me back up to 08 session one. cd. You, you guys don't have to wander around. You haven't got a complex directory structure with files stored in it, which you have to navigate through at the moment. At the moment, all your files are just in one spot. So that's yeah, right. How do, you make, uh, how do you make a directory? Yeah. Uh, if you wanted to make a directory, which at the moment we're not expecting anyone to do, and if you're sitting in the lab, there's a, um, you know, there's a file manager that you just click new and it makes one for you. But if you wanted to type in a command to make it, it's called mukda. So I could call mukda silly directory, and that's my and the ls silly directories, and I can go into silly directory cd silly directory. What's in silly directory? Nothing. I want to get out. I'm stuck. How do I get out? CD, 
dot dot takes me back out. Now I'm in that. And I want to get rid of it. R M D I R. It won't work if you've got files in there. Yeah, yeah. You've got to delete those files first. No, no, don't even say it. Yep. Yep. Because that would be unfortunate if you type that in the wrong directory. So we won't, we won't ever tell anyone that command. That's a command that'll just delete everything inside. Enthusiastically. In, uh, it's a command we all live in fear of typing while we're in the wrong directory. Okay, um, so uh, let's go into CGI bin, see if it's there. CGI bin. Oh, is it in there? It's not looking good, is it? Ugh. I can, that's just the um, forum. It's not in there. It's not in there. Ah, oh, I wonder where I put it. Oh, it's in ass, is it? Okay. Thank you, Thurston. Exit. I just logged out. Has anyone got access to the assignments account? I haven't handed my solution to everyone, I hope. You guys, no one's seen my solution yet, have they? Change the settings. Gee, I wish I'd saved all those settings. It's very annoying to have to tighten them in every time. Was it 20, Pond? OK, and let's just change the color to be white on black rather than black on white. So currently it's the foregrounds. What? What's the background? The background's black, the foreground's white. Do you prefer white on black or black on white? Black on white? Let's try black on white. So make the background white, which is 255, 255, 255. The reason I'm doing this, I'm not actually being silly, the reason I'm doing this is and make the foreground bold. Black is black. The reason I'm doing this, woohoo, is now I've got it as black on white. I want to show you how to save settings. So we've changed our settings and now I'm going to save them. I'm going to call these sessions uh, 1917 and I'll click save. And now whenever we come in, I can just double click on that button and it'll reconnect to this uni and it'll be black and white and the font will be the right size and we won't have to keep changing it. Okay. So I'm going to log in as CS1917 ass. Is that what you reckon, Thurston? And that's... You have mail. Now, when you get this message, it means someone sent you some mail and you haven't read it yet. If you wanted to read it, you would type P-I-N-E. And that's going to give you a mail reader. Shall I start my mail reader and you can see what it looks like? It's all redirected to you now. Yeah, but it's telling me I've got mail, so presumably it's not all been redirected. Someone, someone's getting it through to their account, so I might as well tell them how to read it if it comes through. It, it shouldn't end up in your account, but if it does, typing P-I-N-E will show it to you. And it says, it takes a little while the first time it runs. Making my mail reader. A whole lot of words that you just ignore. You just go, return. Boom, I'm in. Folder list. Yes, list all the folders that have mail in them. Uh, yes, list my mail folders. Thank you very much. Yes, list my inbox. Thank you very much. One message I've got from IPQ system. And if I hit enter on that, hello, this is your regular email about your internet usage. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, look at the bottom, see what the commands are. How do I get out of here? Uh, go back to the index. See it says message in there. The font's so stupidly big it can't print all the words. The, the, that arrow key, the, like the, um, so I'm going to hit that key and it's going to take me back. It's like typing cd dot dot. I'm going to keep hitting that key, it's going to go back, 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 quit. Yes. So that's your mail reader and you can read and write mail inside that. So now we've got, um, uh, we've logged in and we go CD public, might be called public HTML in this directory, and then we'll go in this uh, version and we'll type um, ls cd task one ls. Oh, there's my Bjorn there. See, Bjorn, B J O R N, there's my program. So if we type, oh, I have to type, what do I have to type to run it? Dot slash. Dot means the current directory. You know dot dot meant the directory above where you were. Well, dot means the current directory. So dot is the current directory slash the file in it called beyond. So it's going to run that and type in a number, 100, and that's the output it produced. We typed that in, it gave that out. 
Okay, so now let's get that test file that we made before. Oh no, I, it was in another account. I saved that in. There's a test here, let's see what it looks like. Less, to look at a file you say less, test.txt. It's only got those three cases in. But is that alright? We'll run the test on those three cases? So all I do to run it is I go tilde. David C. Does anyone remember exactly what you type? If we can't remember, we'd better go back to task one testing page. David C. Bin, blah, 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 blah. This is in the spec. So I'll copy all of that. So Control C. Right yeah, as soon as you save test.txt, you can run this. Okay. And you. You don't, what? We're just having fun. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with this. You save that file, you run this program. It just took me a long time to find where my Beyond was. All the stuff I've been doing now is logging in and logging out, trying to work out where the heck I put Beyond. You know where your Beyond is. It's right in front of you while you're writing it. So you just made Beyond. You just created test.txt. Now you run David's program. And I'll say, bing, bing, pass all the tests. Which means manually, it stuck in those three numbers that were in that file, and it checked that the output was correct. Let's edit that file. Pico. And you don't have to remember this where the program is because that's just in the spec. That's a line I copied out of the spec. Pico, test.txt, let's look at test.txt. Had those three things. Suppose my ein was wrong. Suppose I thought, well, come on, one is important. It should start with a capital E. And my program produced that output, suppose. I mean, suppose I thought that's what the output should be. I've actually created a false test here. That's not very good of me. But I just want to show you how the program will fail on a false test. And I can't alter my program to get it to produce false output because my C code wasn't there. It was just the executable. So let's uh, run it now. We'll get out of here. X. And now let me run David's test again. Look, I like an optimistic. I like an optimistic tester. There's nothing better than seeing that message all tests pass. Has anyone ever seen it produce any message except that? I have. It just must not like you, because whenever I run, it just says all tests pass, no matter what I stick in. He must have it so it's case insensitive. I asked him to make it so it ignored spaces, because some people were getting spaces a bit wrong and it was freaking them out. So I said, when you test, let's just ignore spaces. So he might have also test made it ignore upper and lower case. Um, which is very kind of him. Can we see your assignment? Yeah, sure. Yeah. But suppose you thought I only had one N. No, you can't really see my assignment. But I'll show you it at the end. I will. And all the tutors will probably release their assignments at the end too. And we'll also release um, sample code from people that have done really well. We'll say, look, here's what some students did. Which is why we ask you not to put your student number in there so we can anonymize it. We'll anonymize your code. And then show, say, look, here's a model solution that someone did. Aren't they cool? So now this is clearly wrong. Not only is it uppercase, but it's missing a letter. Now hopefully, I'm not going to pass the test now. Ta-da! I ran the test. It did all the tests, but it found that on this case, this is what the test suite says it should produce, which will normally be correct, because you've normally copied that off the web page. Yeah, the Bjorn says web page. And this is what your program gave, which is wrong. Though in this case, actually, the program's given the correct answer, and I had a false test. But does, does that make sense? So the idea would be, if you were doing testing yourselves, you would just have this one file called test.txt and you would just constantly be adding new tests to the bottom of it. And every time you change your program, you run test.txt against it. So how I started writing my program was I put in manually, because my program is the one that's generated all these tests. I didn't have the luxury you've got to be able to ask Beyond, because Beyond wasn't written then. I manually wrote out the first 19 test cases. Then I wrote my program so it worked for the first 19. And as soon as I got that all passed, I thought, good. I thought, what am I going to get my program to do next? Well, next I'd like my, my program to do all the 20s. So then I put in all the numbers up to 29. And then I ran my program, and of course it failed, because it could only do numbers up to 19. And then I kept working on my program and working on it until it worked up to 29. And at some point, when I thought it was all working, I said, go. Now I failed the test, and I found out why and fixed it. Failed the test, found out why and fixed it. Go. Ah, finished. Woohoo! It worked. And I got it working up to 29. So then I thought, OK, now I'm going to do up to um, uh, the Viking version of 100. I don't want to type all of those, my fingers will get too sore, and I presume I don't need to test every single case. So I picked a few unusual cases. I picked um, uh, numbers ending in zero, like 30, and I picked numbers that had the same number, like 33, and I picked 
um, you know, 47, and I just, you know, I just picked of, you know, maybe 20 test cases, and I typed them into the test file. So my test file is just getting longer and longer. And you see now it's still testing the old tests. So if I accidentally break something I currently had working, I'll find out as soon as I run the test file. But now it tests the new cases as well. And then I say, go, and it doesn't work, why, it didn't work, why, ah, it works now. Ah, now I've got it working up to 100. Well, I guess I'll get it working up to 1,000 next. So I stick in all the test cases I'm going to try and do. Does that make sense? So this is how we use the tester. And it's a very good feeling when you get it up to the thing and it says, all tests pass. You go, woohoo! It's this great buzz that you get. Even, and now I find it's a bit, uh, it's actually lying sometimes, even when you're not strictly correct. But because we're using his tester when we're marking, if the test says you've passed, you've passed. Yeah. So what's the thing when we, you said we just grab all the tests off other people? Yeah, anyone, people are posting tests on the forum all the time. Oh no, we're testing all the way up to the Viking number. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What is the Viking number? In the spec somewhere, it's some really big number. Zero, zero, one, one, nine, one, nine. Yeah, 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 it's this huge number. One billion, nine hundred seven. In assumptions, wherever the assumptions are. The input will not exceed that number. So we're going we're gonna to test a whole lot of numbers up to that number, but a lot of the marks are for the range zero to one hundred. Less of the marks are for the range. We're going to be testing all over the place, but if you get it working for up to 100, you'll get a reasonable number of marks. No, probably not. No, no. But you'll get a lot of marks, considering it's only 100 cases. You know, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. And then there's some tests in the range of 100 to 1,000, some in the range of 1,000 to 10,000, some in the range. And, and in every range, we're, interested, we're testing less and less numbers. So at the point you stop working on the program, if you don't get it all the way to the end, you'll, you'll still get some marks. It's not as though you'll you know, get zero and fail completely. You'll get marks for whatever you've done. If you've done half the assignment, you'll probably end up with about half the marks. Sort of thing. I, I said no, not pass from 1 to 100, because I don't think that's half the assignment. The assignment gets really interesting at around about, you know, around about 100, it starts to become quite interesting because you can't just list all the cases then. You've actually got to deal with them generally. And once you're dealing with them generally, um, then it's not that much harder to extend it to thousands and then tens of thousands and so on, once you've worked out how to do that. Okay, so I think we've done testing and I think we've done creating directories, moving around, listing directories. Is that right? Let me write a list of the remaining things to do so I don't forget them. There was mod and div. There were um, using functions. Someone asked about recursion, but I think we'll, that'll be just a little box down the end. You know, we'll get to it if we've got time. And if we don't, we won't be too sad, because we will. you'll keep seeing that in Chutes and Labs next week, and maybe even in lectures. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Loops in uh, 4917. Is there anything I've missed? Oh, how the Viking program itself gets past 20s or how your program will? How we would do it. Yeah, okay, we'll look at that. And someone wanted to know about how Viking numbers went after 100. Was that you asking that? It was you. Yeah, let's look at the... So first of all, we'll see how the Vikings speak these big numbers and then we'll look at how we could program it. So I better write that in. Is there anything else? How to do T1 beyond special cases. So presumably now everyone has it working so it handles all the special cases, but you've seen, well, you can't keep doing that forever. You know, that's, that's efficient for the first 19, 20 or so numbers, but after a while we need to have it being more general. Otherwise we'd have a very long program. Is there anything else? Or are we accepting this as our list? Okay, let's do how the Vikings speak over 100. Uh, and to do that, we'll go and ask Bjorn. So Bjorn says 100, he doesn't call it 100, he calls that 10 Tigger. Remember what Tigger means? T, yeah, which means lots of 10 or something like that. That's right. So this is 10 T. Has anyone seen The Lord of the Rings? And at the beginning of it, Bilbo's having a birthday. 
How old is he? Does anyone remember? He's 111. And I remember it because when I was a little kid and I read that book, they called it this cute birthday. It's a special birthday for hobbits. That's why he's having firecrackers, apparently. They call it your 111st birthday. So they actually have this concept in the Lord of the Rings, hobbits, we all know about hobbits, that this number is called 11 which sort of makes sense because this number is called 19. At the time, I thought that was really cute and I laughed a lot. I thought, ha, 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 ha. Imagine calling 11, uh, 110, 11 But it makes sense now because, you know, Tolkien, he was a complete nut about old English history and he used to write lots of stuff about runes and all these books have runes and things in them. And the old English history is about Old Norse and things like that. They're the people who invented runes and so on. And the Old Norse people really did call this 11 So it wasn't a fun joke like I thought it was. He was actually just sort of talking about a world where the Old Norse people sort of still were. So if we type in 110, we'll get 11 You can't go back. You can't go... Oh, you, <laughs> oh that is so annoying. That is so annoying. It just looks immediately worse. It will work? Yeah, it will work. It works immediately. You are a lucky man. Maybe it's a browser-specific thing because it doesn't work. It definitely doesn't work in um, Opera and it takes one. <laughs> doesn't work in my house. <laughs> so much for a catchphrase. What's the point of this catchphrase? It's so that you can't register. So you can't do this. Enter your <laughs> so you can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, turn off the cameras. <laughs> what? 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 You, you, you are pulling my leg. But who maintains this script? If only we knew. <laughs> oh, good grief. So the whole point of this catch up thing is to annoy us, not to actually achieve any script prevention. He changed it a few days ago in a good way. What's that? Yes, I think he's changed it in a good way. He's disabled it. I wish he'd told me he'd changed it. Okay, well, we might just ask him to change it back. Let's just send him a little email now. Why would computers want to know about all the more It is possible for someone to write a program to try every single combination and generate a test file that's enormously long by firing to the web server every single number in quick succession. Now, the reason we have the test here is we actually want you to think of interesting test cases yourself and we want you to share things. We like that. So this is something that's sort of set up to encourage you guys to share stuff. If people start trying to generate them all themselves, and there's a, a more than a billion of them, it will completely destroy the web server. So no one will be able to get online. And if more than one student tried to do it, just it would just be, forget it. The you know, CSE would grind to a halt. We can't have someone launching a billion queries on our web server. So the catch up is to stop that happening, I have thought. So what we're now seeing is how to write email. We're going to compose a message to David C. How do you spell Kachupitaka? C H U P T A R? Eek. This is to let him know it's important. <laughs> Dear David. Oh, maybe just hi. Hi. I've noticed that the ask B J O R N web script doesn't seem to mind anymore if I use the same catch image each time. This would allow a scripting attack. Eek. Could you please fix this ASAP? Thanks. Cheers. Richard, who else is in here? What's everyone else's name? What's your name? Quinton. Quinton. Q U in ton. ton. And what's your name? William. William. And what's your name? Dylan. D Y L A. D Y. L-A-N. And what's your name? Alan. Alan. <laughs> Anyone else want to sign this letter? It's actually not in your interests. 
So you guys are mad to have already signed it. Maybe I'll just delete that. I did feel we were writing it together, but... Oh, it doesn't need a dot. It needs a what? Look down the bottom to see how to send this message. Control X will send it. Can you see that down the bottom? So I'm going to go Control X. Yes. And to get out, I go back arrow, quit. Yes. Exit. Oh, no, I have exited. Okay, so that's our catch up pick up program. Now, we wanted to work out uh, 111, so let's do that. Submit. Until he fixes it, we've got this lovely luxury of being able to do whatever we want, <laughs> which is really nice. Yeah, I think someone, I don't know what. Has, it been, has anyone noticed that it's been broken? Uh, I, I would say the answer is no, because the web server is responding. Made their own sites which don't have capture in them anyway. But they've made their own sites that use their program, yeah, true. which is less useful for you in testing your program. Um, okay, so uh, so what does it say? Elifu, which means what? Eleven. Eleventy and one. So that's our eleventy first. Can everyone see that? So presumably if we stuck in that, it would be eleventy and two. Does everyone agree with that? So does this go on to twelve T and thirty T and forty T? No way. Let's just try. What happens if we go to this? Is this going to be twelve T? It's 100. So the Viking 100 is what we would call 120. Okay. So they would say, bring me 100 gold coins or I will destroy your village. And it's just a cruel trick. <laughs> I gave you 100 coins. No, you did not. You gave me 10 tea. <laughs> now you have to live in a 10 tea. So, um, let's, so presumably this will be, you get the idea, 101. Slowly, someone has discovered it maybe, 101, and so on. Does that make sense now? Does the numbering, does the numbering system make sense? You reckon you can work it out from there? Yep, yeah. okay, cool. So basically the story is you just ask Bjorn, you just go along, you form a theory as to what's going on and you try bigger and bigger numbers until suddenly the theory doesn't seem to work anymore and you zoom around to find out where it exactly it breaks. Here it broke at 100. We expected it to change from 100 to 101 and it went from 100, it went from 99 to 20 and that was a surprise. So then we found out, okay. All making sense? We can cross that off. How to do task one beyond special cases? Let's do that. Your task one at the moment, if you're just doing the special cases, presumably looks a bit like this. Special cases, anything under 20. Anything under 20? Under 20. Yeah, yeah. Like, because they all have special names, there's no way you can work out exactly what those names are. Oh, well, some of them, some of the names almost make sense. I mean, you could try and treat some of them as a general case if you wanted, but more or less everything next than 20 looks pretty special to me. Um, just trying to turn on some lights so you can see the board. Let's do that. So presumably your program at the moment looks something like this. If your number, which you've, you've presumably called X, is that right? Or you've called it N? I hope you've used just a single letter variable name that doesn't mean anything at all. No. What's that? Oh, I did. I did tell you not to do that. That's right. That's right. So that would be a bad thing to do. Yeah, yeah. So this was sarcasm. This was sarcasm. <laughs> I need to somehow have a sarcasm light on or something. Sorry. You were t taking me at faith, and that is really touching, and I'm, I feel a bit ashamed that I was being sarcastic. So what, what happened just then? What, 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 what? What happened just then is you will certainly not have a variable here that's just one letter long. That would be a bad thing to call your variable, a one letter name. You would give it a real name like number in English that the person typed in. But you, then you'd work out a way of saying that so it didn't take up so much space. But you, you'd call it something. Number in digits or just the value of the number rather than how to speak it. Maybe we're going to call it value. If the value... And presumably you say things like, if the values equal to 6, print f some special case. Squiggly brackets. Else, if the... Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. But that's what I'm saying. So... Otherwise, if it's not 6, but it is equal to 7, 
Uh, well, no, tell me why you think I don't need to put else in. That's right, that's what it is. So, uh, so I'll show you what I was just about to write and then let's discuss about why I was going to write it this way. Um, the meaning of this let me tell you the meaning and then maybe you, we can discuss about why you would do it differently and we can see why, although at first that might seem appealing, it, it might not help you in the long run to do it differently. Um, this is saying, the if means if this is true, consider this part of the program. If that is not true, then consider this part of the program. Yep. So suppose that wasn't true, it wasn't equal to 6. Then that's saying, okay, it wasn't 6, so we've got another if. If this is true, I'm going to do this part of the program. And if it's not true, I'm going to do this part of the program. Um, we're not going to worry about speed. Okay. We're not going to worry about speed because this, the speed issue is not going to be a serious one here. The reason we're doing it is we think about speed very last of all. We think about um, cor correctness and clarity and um, generalizability and readability and all sorts of other things before we think about speed. Um, you might say, oh, but Richard, we could just do this. If value equals 6, do that. If the value equals 7, do that. If the value equals 8, do that. By the way, why am I going 6, 7, 8? Why aren't I just writing the numbers in a random order? Why would, it, why would I write them in increasing order? Why is it logical? And why do we want to give them what they want while they're reading? Why are we trying to make it easier for the person reading it? No. If, if something dies, yeah? The loops go from 6, 7, 8. If we like 6 and 3, then it goes 6 to 10. Then again, it's going to... Yeah, but, what, but it would, the program would still work equally well if I did these in a different order. If I said 8, 6, 7, why am I rank, listed them in this particular order? Less time. No, it will take the same amount of time no matter what order I print them in. Yes. Yeah. What, 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 what could go wrong if I put them in the wrong order? What's, what, what's bad about that? What's, I could leave one out. If I leave one out and it's in the wrong order, okay. I'll never be able to see it. But if it's in the right order and I leave one out, it's obvious because I'm used to counting. This is so obvious that you probably just wrote the program like this without even thinking. But it's a, in general a really good principle to structure your programs so that if something is wrong, it will leap out at you. So the errors are revealed. You sort of, so, so writing them in increasing order is a wonderful way of doing it, or decreasing, or however you want, because it's like self-correcting code. Any, any mistake in there is just going to be so obvious, you're not going to miss it. You're going to pick it up straight away. Oh no, you wouldn't. That's right. In this case, the thing you do naturally turns out to be really convenient. But I wanted to show you that convenient property it had because later on you'll come to cases where there's no natural way of writing it. And your overwhelming concern when you write it, and some people say, if you write it this way, it's 1% faster than if you write it that way. But who cares if it's 1% faster or slower, unless that happens to be a really critical thing, which rarely it is. Normally the big problem is if you write it the wrong way, it might have mistakes and you'll never know. So we normally try and write, normally our biggest problem is mistakes. Our biggest problem isn't speed. Mistakes. The problem with Microsoft Windows, though we always make fun of Windows, I know, because it's slow, but we're making fun of it more because it has mistakes in it, because it stuffs up, because it's got mistakes. Yeah. I could forgive it being slow if it was deadly correct. Um, okay, so this would also appear to work. This will also work because if a number is six, it can't be seven. There's no way a number can be six and seven. So there's no way it's going to print out something here and print out something here. It's only going to print out one of them exactly. Um, 
So what do you think, guys? Why don't we like this? This would appear to still work, but it's not as good as that. What's the problem? Yes. This is this is closer to how I think. I I know that you you say. Because um, say you're looking at the number. Yes. Six. Yes. And you print it and you skip the rest of the. Thing. That's right. If you do the right thing, why would you print six and then ask yourself if it's seven? Yes, that's right. That's right. This one here, you think, is it six? Yeah, I'll print it out at six. Then the next thing you say is, oh, is it seven? Oh, I don't know. I'll check. Is it eight? I I don't know. I'll check. Not only is it making the computer do all these redundant checks, but it's, it's not how we think about the problem. We ourselves know as soon as we know it's a six, then we can throw away the rest. Everything in the else never gets visited, right, if the first part gets visited. So it tells us we can throw away the rest. But it's not like that. You still, it still ends up being the same because if it's not, say you do A, you go, is it six? Oh, no, it's not. You go, yes. is it seven? Oh, no, it's not. In the case that we're looking at the last case, the it does the same amount of work. In the case that we're looking at the first case, it does one test and this one, this one does one test and this does n tests. On average, this way does half as many tests as this way. Yep. As soon as it's a six, it never looks at anything else. None of those ifs ever get evaluated. Oh, so you're saying as soon as it's an if on that one? These are independent ifs. So it does, if I gave, you're a bouncer at the door. And suppose you're just really stupid, okay? And I had to give you instructions to follow. And you've got the instruction, you go, no, I'm the bouncer. Okay, you give me instructions to follow. I'm really stupid. And the instructions are, I've got the instructions, and it says, first of all, ask them if they're um, uh, 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 Keanu Reeves. And if they are, they can come in. And if they're not, they can't. Then ask them if they're um, someone else famous, who I can't even think of, famous person. And if they're not, go, we better have a better example on this. Someone tell me some famous people. Schwarzenegger. Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger. If they're Arnold. Okay. And it keeps going down. Can I have one more famous person? So I've got three. Same as he. Bruce Willis. We've got. Uh, are they all men? Yeah. No, hang on. We need some women. We've got. Uh, uh, I don't know any of these people. Uh, Pamela Anderson. Pamela Anderson? I saw she's dead. <laughs> you cruel man. <laughs> no, um, what about. Uh, uh, um, Dawn French. He's not a woman. <laughs> He's definitely not a woman. It's Dawn French. Like Dawn French is definitely a woman. So, okay, so we're going, uh, I'm at the door. And someone comes up and they say, I say, are you Keanu Reeves? And they go, no. And I go, are you David Hasselhoff? And they say, no. And I go, are you Dawn French? And they say, no. And I say, go, you can't come in. And someone else comes up and says, are you Keanu Reeves? I say, are you Keanu Reeves? And he goes, yes. And I go, oh, good. And then